This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello there once again. Welcome back to our Exam 2 review series. This time we'll do problem 1a and 1b, where we are asked to find f over g and its domain. Let's begin by writing f divided by g. Now we'll replace the f on top with this expression square root of x minus 5, and replace g on the bottom with this expression, x squared plus 3. So on the top of this fraction, we write square root of x minus 5. On the bottom, write x squared plus 3. This will be the function f over g. Now to find its domain, let's briefly remind ourselves of the rules that govern the domain. Remember that under a square root, the inside of the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. And if you're looking at the denominator of a fraction, the bottom must be not equal to zero. We're going to have to check both of these inequalities. So for part one, we'll say x minus five is greater than or equal to zero. If we add five to both sides, we'll end up with x is greater than or equal to 5. For part 2 of the domain, we'll have x squared plus 3 is not equal to 0. Let's subtract the 3 over to the other side. If we do this, we'll have x squared is not equal to negative 3. Now take the square root of both sides. If we take the square root, we'll have x is not equal to square root of negative 3. However, having a negative underneath a square root gives you a non-real number. And if you're ever solving x not equal to a non-real number, this means that you have no restrictions. However, we still have this restriction from part 1, we just don't get any restrictions from part 2. So the only restriction on our domain is that x must be greater than or equal to 5. So we draw our number line once again, place our infinities on the number line, and then we say x is greater than or equal to 5. So we place a closed circle at 5 and say that anything greater than 5 is OK, but anything less than 5 is excluded. So our domain for this composite function is 5 to infinity. Infinity always has parentheses, and since 5 is closed, we put a square bracket for 5. Now let's try the opposite. Find g divided by f and its domain. So we'll begin with g on top and f on the bottom. On the top we'll have function g, and that is x squared plus 3. Let's place that in the top position. On the bottom, we'll have function f, square root of x minus 5. Now, let's check the domain. This time, we have a square root that is in the denominator. Remember that when you have a square root inside of the denominator, it is strictly greater than 0. On top, we have no square roots here, so this will not affect the domain. We only look at the part on the bottom now. So we'll say x minus 5 is strictly greater than 0. Just like in the first part, we'll add 5 to both sides. And we'll have x is strictly greater than 5. Once again, we can draw a number line. Place the infinities on the left and right. This time, we'll place an open circle at 5 because it is strictly greater. Anything greater than 5 will be OK. Anything less will be excluded. So the domain is still 5 to infinity. However, we'll use parentheses on both sides. So that's how we find f over g and g over f. Now we'll try a new variation for problem 1e, 1f, and 1g. This symbol in between the f and the g is called the composition symbol. To find f composite g, we are going to begin with function f, 
and replace all the x's with the next letter in the chain. That's g. So let's begin with function f, that's square root, of x minus 5. We can replace the x with g, giving us square root of g minus 5. Now replace the g with this function, x squared plus 3. So we'll now have a square root of x squared plus 3 minus 5. Now we can combine the 3 and the minus 5 to get square root of x squared minus 2. We are also asked to evaluate this function we just made at 6. So let's let x equal 6 and we'll have square root of 6 squared minus 2. 6 squared is 36 and if we subtract 2 we'll have square root of 34. So the square root of x squared minus 2 is our composite function, and then when we evaluate at 6, we get square root of 34. Let's now handle the other part of it, g composite f of x. In this case, we begin with g, and then we replace all the x's with f. So let's begin with x squared plus 3. We replace the x's with f's, so we now have f squared plus 3. Now we can replace the f with this function here, square root of x minus 5. So we'll have square root of x minus 5 squared plus 3. Now when you have a square over a square root, the two functions cancel. So we'll have x minus 5 without the square or the square root plus 3. If we simplify, we get x minus 2. This is our composite function after all is said and done. Now if we let x equal 6, we'll have just 6 minus 2 is 4. So that takes care of both composite functions and the evaluations when x equals 6. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.